What are the kind of key mistakes people make with, with breathing? Oh, man. Yes, they don't. We, we can go all day. All right, let's go. So first one, definitely breathing in through your mouth um, unless you're pushing it. So for example, if you go sprint, you're going to, you're going to breathe in through your mouth. That's great. But you, you would, most people would have so much better are, they would have much better workouts if they were just breathing in through their nose throughout them. Um, the thing that your breath does is it changes the position of your body. There's it, every single breath is going to change something because you can't bring air in and stay the same. So your structure, your positioning, or what I would think about as your start point is going to change with every breath. So if you think about walking up to your deadlift, walking up to your squat, you think about your bench press, whatever it might be, your overhead press, and you start that off with a conscious breath, your start position to that exercise is improved. So there, there should be nothing more important than that, because if you start in a crappy position, you're not going to magically all of a sudden go, oh, now, now I'm in a great position, especially under load. So that would be the first one. And a lot of common mistakes um, I see is um, with abs and core work, pushing your lower back into the ground. Is there a time for it? Absolutely. I'm not saying that your spine shouldn't flex, but when we stand up, we don't push our lower back into the ground. So if every single ab exercise you do, you're just crunching into the ground and losing length, you're not going to be great at staying long when you stand up because the only pattern you practice is smushing and crunching. So I try to use like kind of like one of my favorite cues is like imagine you had a unicorn horn on top of your head and then you just think about either your feet or your butt. Keep those things as long as far away from each other as possible. And when you're pushing your lower back into the ground, those things are coming together. You're crunching. So you'll see a lot of people with no obliques, no TVA, and it's just all six pack, which again, isn't necessarily bad, but I don't think that's optimal. And in a, in a mobility lens, you'd say, oh, well, what movement options do you have? Well, this person only has a six pack option. That's it. So right. that person's not going to be able to rotate well. They're not going to be able to side bend well. They're not going to be able to do all those other movements that really separate us as humans. Um, another one is tucking your chin. See a lot of people that just tuck their chin for everything. Uh, another cue that I like to think about is imagine that you had, um, you know, a piece of tape right under your chin and it was attached all the way to your Ironman symbol. That's why I use like talk about the stern and most people know that. So if that string is always pulled short and you're tucking it all the time, you're not going to get chest expansion. You need to be able to expand your chest. People that lose shoulder rotation, their shoulder mobility is crappy. They rarely can actually get a good breath into their rib cage. They become belly breathing. There's the next one. A lot of people think diaphragmatic breathing is belly breathing. Every breath is probably diaphragmatic breathing to a certain extent because the diaphragm is going to work at some point. But whether or not your diaphragm and your pelvic floor actually oppose each other, they're, all, they're lined up and they're actually working in a, um, an organized fashion is a different story. So, um, you know, your lungs are not in your belly, they're in your rib cage. So if you're only doing belly breathing, you're probably leaving a lot of stuff on the table. So, um, yeah, that, that, I think that's a good five, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that idea of like uh, belly breathing breathing not being enough because you need 360 degrees you know that like and you don't just breathe this way you breathe this way and, and all the way around um so yeah I see that too it's like it, people are only chest breathers and so then we train belly breathing which is a good first step where it's like okay so instead of taking it up and through here can you cue the belly first but then where does it go you has to be like a you know like you're pouring cup into a you're pouring water into a glass and it starts at the bottom but then you want it to fill all the way up to the top you don't want a glass half empty you know we we, met, we mentioned uh intensity um at what point do you think it's acceptable to mouth breathe uh so for example do you say like if if it's a bodybuilding style workout or a strength training workout where we're not we're not operating it like um, anywhere near uh, anywhere near uh, VO two max or anything like that? Do you think most of those workouts can be done with nasal breathing? Absolutely, yeah. But I think what would happen is you'd meet a lot of bodybuilders that would say, "Oh, I don't do cardio because it kills my gains," and they go, "Well, you're just out of shape. You're not really. You're really good at lifting weights, but you can't do anything else." So they're like. They can't breathe in through their nose because they're out of shape. They look really good. They're really strong. But anything past 45 seconds, they're not that in shape. So right. that's where they might do some zone two. They might work on their breathing. And then they'll go back and be like, well, you know what? My fifth set of deadlifts felt like I could do five more sets. And I usually am dead at that point. It's like, yeah, because 
now you have those heart gains, your body's able to recover faster. So it all feeds into each other, which is again, like back to our original conversation. But to answer your question more specifically, um, you know, somewhere around maybe zone four, zone five. So thinking heart rates, you know, like you'd want to get to there, which, you know, I would expect someone who's working at a one rep max or a three rep max to get around those because it should be that intense to lift, especially with a, a compound lift. Um, but for the most part, especially in between sets, like if you're breathing in through your mouth between all your your in between sets like i would say that there's some some gains to be left on the table both um muscular uh, like hypertrophy wise because of the positioning is probably not that great and then even more so like i said it's probably an indication that you would benefit from doing cardio and i'm talking about 20 to 40 minutes a week maybe two sessions of 20 minutes like you don't even need to get crazy just starting there and i've seen a lot of people have huge gains just from that do you work with many uh, crossfit athletes not as much anymore, but I've worked with fair, a lot of them in my, in my time. For sure. Yeah. And one big thing with CrossFit is the Valsalva breath for everything. So it's like they use the same breath at 50% as they do at their one rep max. And it's the, you know, and creating a lot of intra-abdominal pressure and thinking that that's going to help them where it's like, eh, maybe if you exhaled through the full range of motion at lighter percentages, you get, uh, you know, you have a lot more engagement, you have a lot more capacity, you can probably go for a lot longer if you're a, a CrossFit athlete, obviously, you know, you're barbell cycling and doing all of that, and you're probably going to be more successful with a, a more consistent non-Valsalva breath than that, you know, breath every single rep. Yeah, I think the uh, the task rep the the task mirroring you know your intent is really important. I think that's basically what you're saying. You know, like the thing about CrossFit is like they don't turn anyway, so like they get away with it, and they all look like wide bricks because they don't ever turn anyway. But they do so well with that because they can still pull because they stretch, they work on their mobility, right? They can still get low and deadlift, but they can't turn at all. You know, the one exercise in CrossFit that's not in the sagittal plane is you jumping sagittally over a barbell and jumping back still not turning so you know like those though they, they get away with that and it's fine for them and it works but my argument would be that they would probably do even better if they actually worked on rotating better and they would probably uh you know mitigate some chances of injuries just by restoring those movement options that they've been missing and i think learning to recover better as well like you know when you have those short breaks or you know breaks between sets or breaks between efforts like learning to breathe properly in your rest periods to improve your rest and recovery is, is a huge thing in crossfit because you see a lot of people like they'll get off what they're doing and they'll just breathe like rather than and the heart rate will continue to stay high because they're breathing in that kind of panicky way as opposed to like thinking about calming everything down breathing through the nose exciting through the mouth and just and just controlling it more um yeah. i see that's i see that a lot i do that yeah, and where I'll have to do them like tempos on the sled and then like, all right, you have 40 seconds before you're going to start again. I want you to only nasal breathe. And then like by the eighth round, they're like, I can't. It's like, don't panic. 20 seconds in, you'll be able to again. That's what I want. Next round, 15 seconds in, try to get yeah. there. So you're like using those numbers to get it down. That's a great point. And that's such a great cue for coaches because I feel like a lot of times it's like the coaching or the cueing comes in the work and then the rest period is talking about the work as opposed to talking about the rest. Like how do you know, okay, there's form and there's technique and there's different positioning and all of that kind of stuff that you want to tap on in the actual work. But how should someone rest, you know, and what position should they be? And should they be all hunched over, crouched forward on the floor, dying and then, OK, rest. OK, now we go again. Um, you know that there's a lot of like missing coaching um, that isn't happening in the rest periods because coaches aren't necessarily like cueing how it is that they should be recovering. How to rest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a fun one for cardio is uh, like progressive sprints. I uh, would do like, OK, so we're going to go at a really light pace and I want you to just nasal breathe and see if you can't like how far can you go at what percentages can you get to your uh, upward sprint by just nasal breathing and yes you'll get to the point that you're kind of huffing and puffing and maybe panicking but can you train that ability at your lower percentages to just nasal breathe or like you know to go out for a run and to challenge yourself to just be in through the nose and out through the nose or out through the mouth depending on how y'all feel about that um and uh and 
and you know save the save the sprint for when save that uh, that for when it matters, you know, for when you really really need it.